The number 10 event is the coastal storm of March 2018. We get a lot of attention with tropical cyclones in our area, but sometimes nor'easters can produce just as bad of damage. We had some flooding up across the Outer Banks, especially on the ocean side. And then because of very, very strong winds pushing that water to the east, we had low water issues, places like the Pamlico River at Washington. We had wind gusts approaching very strong tropical storm force winds across especially the eastern areas closer to the coast. The number nine event is a coastal snowstorm January 2011. We had an area of low pressure off the Florida coast that moved well offshore, the perfect track for our area. It keeps us cold enough, but close enough to the moisture. We actually had snowfall rates of one to two inches per hour. In fact, six inches of snow in Frisco was the most here since January of 2003. You can see the highest amounts were close to the coast. The number eight event is another snowstorm. Who said we didn't get snow in eastern North Carolina? This was our fourth snow in two months with the highest amounts occurring across the central part of our area, such as New Bern. Closer to the coast, we saw more of a sleet freezing rain mix. So you can see from the map the highest totals up to 10 inches near the city of New Bern eastward across portions of Pamlico County, lesser amounts toward the coast. The number seven event is Hurricane Dorian. While not as widespread as Florence, it was devastating for two communities. The first, Emerald Isle with an EF2 tornado with winds of 115 miles per hour. And then due to the storm track close to the coast, we had very strong winds, especially coastal areas, and devastating storm surge, specifically across Oak Croak Island with storm surge values of four to seven feet occurring in a very, very short period of time. The number six event is the snow and bitter cold of early January 2018. A good storm track for our area if you like snow. We had widespread two inch amounts for most of us. Some locations actually saw six or seven inches a little bit farther inland. The most impressive thing with this storm was not just the snow, but the bitter cold. Multiple mornings with lows in the single digits to below zero, we actually saw some ice on some of the local waterways. You can see some of these creeks and sounds near our area. And this satellite image shows the snow cover and ice across the region. The number five event is Hurricane Matthew, the second of what will be four hurricanes on our list. With a storm track near and just off our coast, we saw strong wind speeds, especially down toward the coast itself. And the big story was record rainfall, more than 10 to 15 inches in some spots, especially farther inland. In fact, this caused some high river levels in places such as the Tar River at Greenville, record flooding in Kinston along the Noose. In fact, for a lot of us, the main legacy of Matthew will be that catastrophic flooding Flood levels not seen since Hurricane Floyd in 1999 caused millions of dollars of damage and unfortunately multiple deaths across the eastern third of North Carolina. This led to road washouts and closures. Meanwhile, as the storm departed, very strong winds on the southern Pamlico Sound caused record storm surge flooding at Hatteras. The number four event is the tornado outbreak of April 16, 2011. Multiple long track tornadoes developed in total 12 on the afternoon and evening of the 16th. That couplet just south of Snow Hill produced this EF3 tornado. The pictures you're looking at now, Green County Middle School up in the Snow Hill area, devastation to that building itself. You can see those are cinder blocks. In addition to the school, multiple businesses and residents, and of course, numerous trees uprooted and snapped uh, with that EF3 tornado in Green County in the Snow Hill area. Farther to the south near the coast, we had another EF3 tornado. This was just east of Jacksonville in the Piney Green area. You can see the pictures coming up. Again, massive damage to businesses and homes in the area. In addition, across the southern part of Onslow County, that storm moved to near Riverdale in Craven County later in the evening. In total, numerous injuries were reported. The number three event is Hurricane Irene in 2011. Irene made landfall near Cape Lookout, North Carolina as a strong Category 1 storm. Irene is an example of why you should not just focus on the category. 10 to 15 inches of rain fell with the storm, widespread wind amounts of 60 to 90 miles per hour. So that's why we emphasize don't just focus on the category. Irene was extremely large and produced uh, a lot of rainfall and strong winds, and that can occur regardless of what the category is. And well ahead of the storm itself, in addition to the rainfall and wind, we actually had an EF2 tornado across northeast North Carolina in Columbia. 
The number two event is a derecho in July of 2012. We had an extreme atmosphere ahead of that storm, temperatures near 100, dew points in the 80s. We use something called CAPE to determine how much energy is in the atmosphere. It was between five and 6,000, something that's very rare for our area. Unfortunately, with all that fuel, we had a line of thunderstorms that developed and formed across central North Carolina and swept through the area. It killed three people, one in a collapsed building and two due to a fallen tree. Uh, some of those pictures we just showed you was from Warren Field up toward Washington. Some of the worst storms that this area has seen in many, many years. The number one event is Hurricane Florence. One of the aspects we remember from Florence is such a slow movement of the storm toward our area and then really hanging across our area for multiple days. The first thing we saw with Florence was a devastating storm surge. This is Bogue Sound. In fact, Bogue Sound got so high because of the storm surge, we actually had three feet of water on Highway 24 near Bogue. Uh, again, as you're looking westbound on the road itself. Along the coast itself, we had uh, coastal erosion, places like Emerald Isle. This is a picture from North Topsail Beach. As far as storm surge values, two to four along the Crystal Coast, but eight to 11 feet caused over 1,800 water rescues in New Bern alone. We mentioned the storm was a slow mover. That led to some heavy rainfall, amounts of 20 to 30 inches across the southwest part of our area caused numerous road washouts and issues across the region. Again, 20 to 30 inches of rainfall. That led to historic river flooding exceeding record levels from 1999 with Hurricane Floyd, places like the Trent uh, River at Pollocksville. In addition to Florence itself, it was a record-breaking year for rainfall. In fact, here at the office in Newport, we had over 100 inches of rainfall. And to put that in perspective, that's 8.5 feet of rain. Wind gusts were highest along the coast. The most important aspect with that was the long duration, and that led to numerous tree damage in addition to power outages up to a week. In addition to all of those impacts, we had over 25 confirmed tornadoes along the coast. When the weather is bad, we stay here. We're open 24 seven, uh, not only our office, but all offices across the country. So we continue to provide support prior to Florence and during the storm itself. We're in a reinforced building that's high here in Carteret County. Our conference room served as a briefing location, but also where we could have some food during the evenings and then also sleep a few hours at least at night. It's important to remember our folks up at the Wakefield office, our sister office to the north that backed us up after the storm so we could do some surveying in terms of impacts. And it was great to see the community come together with such a devastating time. We want to at last end with that aspect. Not only our office here in Newport, Moorhead City, but all the 122 offices in the Weather Service, we're here 24 seven serving you. So no matter how bad the weather is, know that we're in a safe location. We're here to monitor the weather and serve our main mission to you, and that's to protect lives and property. We hope you have a good 2020, and we hope the next decade is a little quieter than we had with the last one.